This is a section of Genoa track, complete with corroded old bolts, some of which haven't made it all the way out. And this is actually the first part of our next boat work project. I'll let Julian explain. So anyone who owns one of these, a Peterson 44, knows that it has leaks. One of the main sources of leaks is the design of the Genoa track. I don't know what Doug Peterson was thinking when he did it, but every single one of these eight inch long bolts, some of them are corroded away. Here's a full one. This goes all the way through the bulwark and ends up inside the hull. When we take you inside and show you where these bolts come through, you'll be able to see that every single one of them has got corrosion stains coming down from it. They all leak directly through and they leak into the core of the deck. We've decided to redesign this area and remove the 12 foot long section of cap rail which has 35 bolts in it each side port and starboard and redesign the attachment points for the various turning blocks etc that go through this area of the boat. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. So this is a section of the aluminium Genoa track that we're removing. And this is what it supports. This is our turning block for the Genoa sheet. And there are various other blocks that attach further down for spinnaker and uh, running backstays, etc. So we never move this. We're not racers. We never run this block further forward or further back. It just stays here. So we thought, well, why have the track? What we're going to do is we're going to use the old, old school chain plate uh, method to support these blocks. Imagine if you can, this piece of plywood is going to be a stainless plate. We've got a couple of 20 mil holes up here for shackles etc to go through. So here's a section of the cap rail with the track removed and this uh, chain plate is basically going to bolt directly onto the side of the bulwark here. It will notch the cap rail out so this can fit flush and instead of the turning block running on a car which runs on the track it will just shackle to the top of this chain plate. Chain plate doesn't need to move fore or aft it'll just be bolted right through the bulwark and that's it. Simple. So as Julian's explained we're cruisers not racers but we still need to make sure that what we were doing wasn't going to affect the sailing performance of the boat. So we sought some advice from our local rigger and uh, one of our local sail makers. So we got the rigger in first just to check that what I designed uh, was going to be strong enough. Him and his engineer who is his offsider both confirmed that what we designed was probably stronger than it needed to be. So that was part one. Part two, we got the sail maker down. I just wanted to ensure that we weren't gonna lose sail shape in the Genoa by not being able to move the block forward or backward. And the only time that we actually get a bit of uh, luffing in the Genoa is when it's partially furled. And we've always got around that by just hauling the sheet down to uh, midships on the boat, effectively changing the sheeting angle. That always works and he agreed that's a, that's a great way to go. Otherwise known as barber hauling. The old fashioned term is barber hauling and in fact uh, years ago boats didn't have uh, track systems for, so you could move the, the sheeting angle fore and aft. They just used to barber haul on a, on a block and tackle and change the sheeting angle that way and it's actually a much better way to go because you can do that when there's a lot of wind in the sail and, and it's all under pressure. So we're going old school. <laughs> there's no school like the old school. <laughs> well simplicity, I yeah. like simple things. We've got 70 holes going directly from the outside of the boat into the inside of the boat and to the inside core of the deck and we're going to eliminate those 70 bolts. That's got to be a good thing. This comes down to the reason why we're doing this and why we're doing this now. We have been trying to work on the cat rail or tow rail as some people call it, uh, which is that piece of teak that runs 
all the way around the boat and covers the halter deck join. We've been trying to do that for the last couple of years. The weather just hasn't been kind to us. We've it's never, a huge job. Too. It's a big job and we've never had enough uh, dry spells to just get on with it. Um, and we're biting the bullet now. We're just going to do it, whatever. We'll be doing it in smaller sections and uh, just trying to keep things dry as we go. But we're at the point now where it's counterproductive to keep carrying on down below without fixing this one last major leak. This is a cross section of the area that we're talking about. Here you can see there's a plywood core to the deck. The underside of the deck is glassed into the um, hull. Here's the top of the hull. On a Peterson this is about half an inch thick, 12 millimeters thick right here. The bulwark is formed by the inside molding of the deck which is dropped into the hull and they filled the gap with plywood. This is the teak cap rail which is really just a, a decorative covering piece and then the track that we're talking about is bolted with those ridiculously long, I think they're eight or nine millimeter bolts that go all the way through the bulwark and bolt up inside the hull. As we'll show you in a minute, these have either corroded through because water has always come through here or there's stains going down the inside of the hull. Anyway, we're removing these bolts, we're removing the aluminium track and the stainless steel chain plates. This is slightly out of scale, but you'll get the idea. We're basically going to mount like, like so inside the bulwark and these will bolt right through with nine millimeter bolts or oh, three eighth inch bolts and will be very strong and these bolts will be completely sealed off from the bulwark as you'll see later and there's no way for water to get into the hull anymore in that area what i'm going to do is i'm going to fit these first or drill the holes for them where they go and that will give me an indication of the core condition in these areas and there's three each side. Any other areas where I suspect there may be some rotted plywood core we'll have to take a section of cap rail off and we'll have a look and uh, we'll see what we find. What we're also going to do while we're on this exercise is remove any obsolete deck fittings. Now this big heavy duty pad I hear was actually the fitting for the running back stain and we moved it out to the track, or someone moved it out to the track, so that the backstay clears the deck more, so we don't have to uh, work our way around it. Anyway, that's going to come off, and these bolt holes are going to be sealed with epoxy. No chance of that leaking. So the running backstay turning block will have its own chain plate right there, and the block will go onto that. Moving on back to the aftermost uh, chain plate we're fitting on, this chain plate is exactly the same as the others will go here and this is for our, our spinnaker turning block or code zero in our case. Now these Petersons used to have a big symmetrical spinnaker and this is actually the pad eye for the turning block for the spinnaker. We've never used this and I know that these leak as well. They come all the way through and they're completely corroded underneath. So we're going to take that one off. That's another source of leaks and do exactly the same sealing operation here as we did up there. So we're in the area underneath the bulwark now, and you can see here, these are the bolts coming through of the section that we haven't removed yet. Now here you can see where they've been removed. And if you look at each one individually, you can see these rust stains coming down the hull. And that's how many bolts are leaking? Virtually all of them and in here there were three bolts that actually snapped right off they're completely corroded through so moving off you can see a lot of corrosion here so that's leaking you can see the stains coming down stains bad stains bad stains a couple of these broke off in here so these are where the bolts come through for the running back stay and uh, these will be coming out as well. We'll completely seal these holes off with epoxy and fiber. And we won't have to worry about that one at all. So this is the area adjacent to where most of the leaking was happening. And you can see this old plywood is just completely delaminated from 
moisture, it's all black. We'll be ripping all that out, replacing it with um, non-wood material. Anyway, all these holes are gonna get filled and um, move on from there. Now I'm just about to seal these holes that I've cleared out with a slightly larger drill than was before. These holes are eight inches long. And I'm gonna use this Sikaflex roof and gutter sealant. I've used it externally on the boat and it's still good after years. It doesn't get affected by sun. Even if it did, it doesn't really matter. This is not gonna see the sun. And I just wanted a method of having constant pressure all the way through, very little chance of, of any voids occurring and it's not brittle like epoxy dries brittle roof and gutter sealant first thing i have to do here is find out how many squeezes of the trigger it's going to take to fill each hole then i can go along and do three or four at a time and then go down below and clean up that's one that's two go and have a look the two didn't do it that's three. I'll do one more for luck. Hopefully this works. That's four. <coughs> it's not through yet. Five. Six. Well that's six and I can just see the sealant now at the bottom of the hole. So I'll put one more in. That's seven. pretty windy today so I don't know what the sounds gonna be like on this I'm gonna give the cap rail a bit of a sand and see what sort of uh, condition it's in after it's been underneath that aluminium track for 45 years and I can see down here there's gonna be a bit of a repair needed there I won't really know until I give it a good sand and uh, see what I've got left a few moments later some of it's pretty good, some of it's not so good, so I'm going to have to do some teak plugs in a few places. These are actually okay, I'll just be able to put a plug in these. There are some like this which may need a, a piece of teak graved in there. Some are worse than others, there's one, it's a bit bad. There's a fair bit of material on these caps. I might actually run a belt sander, take a millimetre or two mil off, and that will reduce the amount of work I have to do it's Monday morning. I've removed over half of the bolts and over half of the track, but they were all easy to get to. Now the next bit is going to be harder. The um, Peterson has a fuel tank in here. You switch the torch on here and you'll be able to see the bolts that I've got to get to next. And they are in there above the fuel tank. I'll show you the various methods that I need to use as we go. So this one here has snapped off right there. So that one's gonna have to be extracted out of the top. This one, the nut has come off. Same thing, the bolt will come out the top. This one here, the nut has corroded onto the end of the bolt. There's nothing to grab hold of there to snap the bolt off. So that one's gonna have to have the track cut away from the top and I'm going to have to cut the top off the bolt and drive the 8 inch bolt right through down into the boat here. Which is not as easy as it sounds because there's a couple of things in the way which may have to be got out of the way temporarily to do that. There's another one there, same deal, the nut's completely corroded on there going to have to be cut off from above and driven down into the boat. There's one there which I'm taking off right now and then we'll see how we go with the last two. The last few bolts are in here and many years ago when we first bought this boat, was it 16, 17 years ago, I actually managed to fit in there. So I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to fit in now. Right, there it goes.
So I've got all but one nut off of those bolts and the one nut won't come off because I can't access it. Once it starts coming down the bolt, disappears behind some wiring. So I'm gonna have to go outside and pry up the uh, aluminum track about an inch and then I'll be able to access that remaining nut. So I'm getting my favorite tools, crowbar, big screwdrivers, brute force stuff. So let's see how we go. This teak is not looking very healthy under there at all. Must have had a knock in the past, I think. Split all the way along. In fact, this piece has been replaced in the past. You see there's a scarf joint there. There's another one back there. Normally these pieces are about eight foot long. It's a short piece here. So I think it's been replaced before. This could be a major source of a leak here. Anyway, I think this piece is going to have to be replaced. So before we go down this track, if you'll pardon the pun, I'll just explain. What Julian's begun to discover here turned out to be the proverbial can of worms. This tow rail had obviously been split for a long time, and over that time, water had been entering the hull to deck join and rotting the plywood core. We would now be tasked with removing the tow rail, not just in the sections under the tracks as it eventually panned out, but that's a completely separate topic and a story in its own right. So for now, we'll jump forward to the installation of the new chain plates and show you how that all worked out. So I've got six of these chain plates that I had made up. This is the aftermost one, which is for the Code Zero turning block. This section of the bulwark here is completely filled with epoxy and fibre all the way down to here and then it comes back up to two inches below the top, the rest of it is uh, just two inches deep. But where these high load plates are I've cut the old timber core right back down here so that whole section is still solid. So this is what the chain plate modification looks like. You might say this looks a bit ugly, but all I've done is copy what's already there on the back of all the Petersons, which is the bolted through cleat. So it's not really very different to what's going on at the back, except it's not so far back. On the inside of the bulwark, they look like this. We've got eight mil stainless steel plate and three eighths of an inch bolts, four of them, going right through the bulwark. I think it's a vast improvement on the horrible old aluminium Genoa track that you can still see on the other side. I haven't replaced it yet. One eternity later. Good morning. Well, today we can start putting bits back on. Here's the freshly painted white scupper. I've already dry fitted these so now I'm going to put them on permanently. Good idea when you're putting sealant, sickleflex, whatever you call it around is to mask up everywhere that you don't want the sickleflex to go. Save yourself a hell of a lot of cleanup. And then um, I've already done this, but with a latex glove, just wipe the finger around, make a nice fillet if you want to, and then give it 10 minutes, peel it off. It was a case of rinse and repeat for the port side of the boat. What a horrible 
little bit of gear. Straight to the bin. Two thousand years later. noticed I'm sitting here next to a completely shiny white scupper and bulwark which is across the entire boat there's no tow rail either but that's another story which we'll share with you in another video for now what we wanted to do was show you these completely installed chain plates in action so let's go sailing This is the first time that we've been able to show you this actually in action. So you've seen it going on and off the bulwark many times. It's firmly on now and this is how it works in just a regular sailing configuration. So we've got the jib sheet, Genoa sheet, whatever you want to call it, coming down through the block that would have gone onto the car and track system. It's now shackled onto this chain plate and going over to the winch. That's simple. But there are times when you might need to change this configuration for various reasons. Um, so obviously you have different size headsails and uh, when the headsail starts to luff, when you're going at different angles to the wind, that's when you might look at changing the sheeting angle by, in the old system, moving the car and uh, further back along the, or forward along the track. What we're gonna do is what's known as barber hauling which is hauling down on the sheet and that as you'll see in a moment is how you can change the sheeting angle and the shape of the sail so for the purposes of this demonstration we're going to pretend that the wind's coming up and so we have to fill the jib and uh, we'll show you how we cope with the changing uh, sheeting angle that's required when you fill the sail Right, so now we've got a partially filled jib. If you look up there, you can see how the the um, the luff of the the luff of the sail is too loose, and that's because the sheeting angle is wrong. So what we're going to do is put the barber hole on the sheet to get that that slackness out of the luff of the jib. But snatch block doesn't even need to be a snatch block really. You could just use a piece of rope, but if you were using this long term you don't want to chafe anything this could also be a block and tackle which we'll probably do it can be a cleat or any strong point I could put that on a winch um, because there's a fair bit of strain on it at the moment. Uh, that's as, as hard as I can actually do it by hand. So that's why you have a three purchase tackle or actually run it through to a winch to pull that down. But you can see how the sheeting angle has changed. It's now, it's now pointing down towards here. So it's as if the block was down here. Whereas in fact, the block's right back there. And we'll just have a look at the sail. So, so as you can see, it's not lapping at the top like it was. And that, my friends, is barber hauling. Look at, that, really. Look at the back of that sail now. I'll show you the difference now. I'll let the barber haul off. Yeah happens to the sail. If you yeah. have a quick look at the sail now, that's yeah. sort of trim. Yeah. See the difference? 
it's really lapping again. Yeah, it's hanging the top, right out. The, the sail's yeah. sagging right out because the, the sheeting angle's wrong. So remember, this is with partially furling a furling sail, and you're never going to get as good a sail shape with a furling sail. When the wind comes up, we would typically go to the staysail rather than the jib or genoa. And that's another reason why we weren't really using that track and car system. And the sail just stayed where it was pretty much. But you get the picture. Well, as always, a big thank you for watching and we hope you found this video informative. If you want to see the next part of our refit story, where we demonstrate exactly what we found across the entire hull to deck join and how we fixed it, then stay tuned. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up or leave us a comment. It all helps with getting these videos recommended to other people who might benefit from them. See you next time.